Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Why, hello there. Welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And I'm Phil Thompson. We come to you every week with this uh, podcast designed to uh, help churches use technology. We're a tech company called JSL Solutions. We have several products that we offer. We do. Streamingchurch.tv, Church App Live, LifeLock.com, and our new favorite product, Greeter.Church. Greeter.church. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what that is, just go and type in greeter.church on your browser, and you can find out. It's actually a uh, interactive greeting uh, that you can a, put on your church's website. An online greeter for all those people during the week and weekend that are visiting your website. And get uh, Live. Yes. Live greeter. And the other ones are the mobile apps, the church management is myflock.com and websites and then of course streamingchurch.tv is our is our streaming product so we're we're glad that you are with us thanks for spending a little bit of time with us steve and i are involved in church work and have been involved uh, not only in the tech side but in ministry ministry re- resources and being involved in ministry and all that good stuff and so we're glad to spend some time with you and uh these podcasts are normally about tech related things although this one is probably an exception. We're not going to talk so much about tech today as we're going to talk more about uh, leadership and more about uh, really how you can succeed here in 2016. Last week, we talked about planning for 2016. This week, we're going to talk about how to make sure you don't fail in your planning. Or in the execution of your planning. In the yes. execution of your planning. Yeah, well said. So, because it's it's very easy to make plans, but you know it's, it's it's another thing to carry it out, to to really execute it, to yes. implement it, to make it happen. So this week we have a top ten, right? We have yes, we have ten reasons why you might fail, <laughs> and how it's, to avoid that. Yes, <laughs> because it's the, easy. to Your fail. written notes are a little harsher. Yeah, I know. I, uh, but I've, now top. I'm reading them. I yes, don't wanna... 10 reasons why you're probably going to fail. <laughs> well, <laughs> why you could fail, but but hopefully you won't because we're gonna tr- we're going to try to give you some tips to prevent you from failing. Yes, John, top John, 10 tips. Yeah, top 10. John Maxwell, who has been involved in leadership training in churches for many, many years, uh, was asked one thing, uh, What what is the one thing that, that most determines the success or failure of a leader? And his answer was, a teachable spirit. Oh. And so uh, I think sometimes, I would agree with that. I think many times our failures can be avoided if we just stop long enough to maybe evaluate whether or not what so we're doing. we don't want actions. a leader that already knows everything? Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> well, I used to think John Maxwell did, but apparently he doesn't. So, But uh, but but the, the bottom line is we need to spend a little bit of time evaluating you know, our actions. Are they heading in the right direction? And uh, as you know, history tends to repeat itself, so it might be easier than you think to predict whether or not your next idea is really going to be successful. So let's just talk about that a little bit. Uh, so I've been around this this planet for a while, and I've experienced several failures in my life. <laughs> I've watched other people fail, and I'm guessing people listening here could probably relate to that, right? Yeah, I think so. So here's some reasons why I think some common reasons why failure happens and uh, we can get some conversations going on this. So should we just kick it off? Let's dive in. So number one on our list. So is... the, the reason you might fail and you probably will fail if it's not your passion, if it's not your passion. So whatever right. it is you're going to implement or try to do or plan, if it's not your passion, if your heart doesn't really get excited about it, uh-huh. uh, you know, or, you know, maybe when you're trying to go to bed at night, you know, if your mind's racing, if it's not racing towards that, that thing, uh, you might be going in the wrong direction. So you've got to have passion 
whatever it is you're going to do, whether it's planning a church, running a church, or implementing something within your church or your ministry or even your business. Right. So I was starting to think about, well, then that means if I want to, if I have to do some work to get the thing done and I, you know, who's passionate about getting doing some work, that it's not going to succeed. But I think the the idea here is that if you are passionate about it, or passionate about whatever it is, then you won't look at it so much as a bunch of work to do. It's something you get to do to you know drive towards that target. Right. Yeah, because passion will energize you. Yes. And so, you know, I've you know, just my own personal life. I've helped start some ministries and I've been excited about them and I've got lots of energy mm-hmm. to spend 10, 12, even more hours a day starting something or making something work. I, I got the privilege of helping start a couple Christian radio stations in my life, as well as churches. And the passion fueled me. I was a little younger back then too, but the <laughs> passion still gave me energy. All right. So whatever it is you're looking at doing next, especially as we talk about 2016 here, we're actually in February now, but you know, if you don't have a passion for it, if it's just a good idea, yeah. that you think you should do, <laughs> And then when it gets down to getting the work done and you don't have the passion to right. fuel you, then you yeah. you quickly, yeah. uh, you know, wither of energy and the thing goes away. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I experienced this and I know you have too, even with our company, JSL Solutions. There's things we've talked about. Yeah, we should probably do this. This would be a good idea. We put it on our Asana list uh-huh. and, and then we keep kicking the can down the road a ways. Because it's, ah, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. But when you're passionate about something, you'll get to it right away usually. Mm-hmm. And you'll do whatever it takes to at least get the thing rolling. Yes. Right? So if you don't have passion, you probably are going to fail at least in something, you know, that you've got here on your, your plans. Right. Okay? So, so number two. Number two. Uh, you don't have a plan. Now, we talked about this last week planning for 2016, but you know, you've got to have a vision and you, you need to identify, and you're really good at this specific steps to make that a reality. Cause anytime I say something, okay, so what's your, what's your step-by-step procedure, Phil? And I go, I don't know, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> but, but there's, you should have a plan and you should have a vision and you should have step-by-step things to make it a reality. And it includes financial and includes, you know, whatever it is you believe that God is, wanting you to do. Yes, I agree. So it's it's more than just, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do it. But it's the actual procedure doing right. the plan. Yeah, I really, I think it is very important. Maybe it's, I mean, I'm a list guy. Yeah. And I like to know that, okay. And that's how you make progress too. If you have yeah. a, you put together a step-by-step that says, you know, where you've, you've translated your vision into some concrete steps and you realize right. once you have a plan, you're like, wow, there's 25 steps to this vision and I can't go from step two to step 23, you know, without getting them done. And if I'm still working on step two and it's been six months, I realize I ain't going to get there for another few years. Right. And, and, and it, you know, it just depends on how big the plan is or whatever. It may not be terrible, but again, it kind of goes back to the first one and that is passion will fuel that hopefully, Mm -hmm. but you do have to have a, you have to have a plan and you're a big list guy and, and I am too. I'm not so much as I used to be, but I'm trying to get my son, you know, he's a teenager to, to do things and I'm trying to have him implement a list, mm-hmm. you know, and then he works on those things, but plan planning. So if you don't have a plan, it's a good possibility. You might fail. Right. All right. Number three, if you're waiting for it to be perfect, you're waiting for perfect conditions. There's a scripture, I think it's in Ecclesiastics and I think it's, in a loosely translated version, living Bible version that says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. That's a loose translation from Ecclesiastics. But yeah. the bottom line is if you're waiting things to be perfect, it's, um, there's a, a similar phrase in my former aerospace business that went along the lines of it's time to shoot the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that a little more. <laughs> so it basically means, uh, let's get rid of the engineer because he's going to engineer this thing forever. This thing <laughs> is to a point where it will fly. Right. So you've got to shoot the engineer and move forward. Yeah. Well, and and I, I work with the general manager, you, you know, Doug Martin, and, and Doug was kind of 
you know, the opposite is like, just, just go out and do it. Now, in some cases he wasn't great on planning, but you, you got to have some planning. You got to have some engineering, but, uh, yeah, if you don't, if you're just waiting forever, uh, you need to just get it out there. Yeah. And yeah. there's a, another new popular concept, you know, I'm in the entrepreneurial world and there's this notion of a minimum viable product, the MVP. Okay. They really push the MVP, which basically means, uh, the same as the, sh- you know, shoot the engineer and it- is take something that is, that is minimally viable and put some miles on it, get it out there, get some people to beat on it right. because you'll get to a much better product much more quickly. If you just start with your minimally viable product. Yeah. I think that's good. You got to test drive it. You got to beta test it. Uh, otherwise you'll fall into inaction, the trap of inaction. And nothing will happen. Yes, so, you'll wait so, for it. It's not quite, it's not ready yet. Yeah. I know people that have waited years. I'm not quite done. It's not perfect yet. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, this is an old saying that you've heard, you know, we're, we're building the airplane as we fly it kind of a thing. And I think there's some truth to that, you know? Yeah. All right. So another, so if you, if you're waiting for perfect conditions, you're probably going to fail because you're never going to get perfect conditions. All right. So number four. You're not willing to work hard. <laughs> That's pretty much truth. I mean, it, there, you, anything that is worth pursuing in life has to have some discipline and perseverance. And, uh, I agree. And you got to be able to put the work in. You, you just have to put the work into it. And again, I comes back down to the first one, passion. You know, if, if you don't have the passion, there's a good chance you're going to just give up. But uh, you you are going to have to put some effort in it, some energy in it. You have to work at it. So again, this list, this thing that we're talking about, you know, involves ministry, involves church stuff, involves anything in your life, and can involve your marriage for that matter. So if you're not willing to work hard at it, it's you're probably going to yes. fail. Yeah, it reminds me of um, friends who have uh, have this great idea, and they come to me and they say, "I'm going to split this idea. I'm going to tell you this idea, and we'll split it fifty fifty. He says, "You you do all the work." <laughs> <laughs> but but I came up with the idea, and I I have to remind them that um, doing all the work is ninety percent, ninety five percent of uh, yeah. the product. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Yeah, they really are. So number five, it'll outgrow you. It'll outgrow you. So uh, the bottom line is, is is here is you've got to keep learning, you've got to keep growing spiritually as well as you know, emotionally and, and, uh, uh growing, uh, you know, in, in, in the ways of, of what you're doing here. Uh, but more importantly, you've got to build, I think a team of people, and this really works with comes to church work as well as business, you've got to build a team of people, including leaders that can be who you are not. So, you know, I found this true when I was planning churches, you know, I can get it off the ground but I need other people to help get it to the next level uh, because I, I'm not all knowing I'm not all powerful. I'm not uh, that talented. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of times, especially when you're a one pastor church, you know, it, you feel like it's all on you. And, and, but the bottom line is you've got to raise up some leaders. You've yeah. got to yourself grow in, in areas, but especially raise up some people. Uh, so that, Higher for your weaknesses. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and I would say this, you know, as we talk about this here, um, you know, it's one thing to work on your weaknesses, and I think that's important. But there are some people. I mean, there there are some things that I'm just not talented at, and and I need somebody else to come alongside of me mm-hmm. that has those strengths, and so I need to work on my strengths and get them even stronger. And you need to work on your strengths and and come alongside and complement what's happening. Right. Exactly. So, uh, it, it will outgrow you. And if you don't do something about it, you know, you're going to end up, it's going to go so far and then quit. So, all right. So number six here, as we talk about reasons why you could possibly fail in your, in your vision, number six is you've had success in the past. So it's easy <laughs> to kind of hang your hat on your past accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Um, but the truth is, and that can help you a little bit, and that can take you a little ways. And, and obviously, experience, successful experience is very good. Uh, and even successful failures are good because you can hopefully learn from what, where you where you missed the mark. But uh, 
you can't just rest on that on your laurels. Right. You know, you're going to have to uh, keep going. And this includes things happening in your church last year. Okay. So you had some success in an area of ministry last year. Well, it doesn't mean you're going to have success this year. So momentum can fade and it's easy sometimes uh, you know, it's risky to let go of the past and, and jump in the next wave, but you really need to. And sometimes you just need to move on and keep going to get to the, to the next level. All right. So number seven, you're unwilling to stop doing something else. <laughs> so again, um, you know, simplicity takes a little bit of discipline. Uh, so you can't build, for instance, like a healthy marriage if you're unwilling to give up dating other women. <laughs> I know some people that have had that problem. So who or what do you need to stop dating? So in other words, take this to ministry levels here. And I'm trying to use an analogy there. I don't know if anybody got it. But, you know, if you're all over the map, you may have to stop doing one thing in order to focus yeah. on what's important. Yeah, I was mentioning I listened to a bunch of podcasts and one of the guys I listen to is really big on on planning for the coming year and he finishes all this planning by November and part of his annual planning is planning what he's going to stop doing the next year. That's good. It's so very he good. Puts together a list of okay, I've been doing this and I'm not going to do this yeah. anymore. So otherwise, you know, you just build too much onto your plate. You got to identify right. what you're going to stop doing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you just, you, you've got to be willing to, to make that step and to make that change. And and I think you need to encourage everybody, your staff and people you work with to do that as well. All right. So as we move on here, you won't build a team. You won't build a team of friends. So uh, I guess anybody can hire, you know, from a resume, uh, a list of accomplishments, but you, you need to find people you want to share life with. So you won't succeed. Uh, let's see, how can I say this so that it's clear? Uh, the people that you work with on your team, there's got to be relationship there. Yes. There's got to be friendship there. Maybe Doesn't necessarily mean you hire your friends right. so much, but that you have a dynamic where there's a relationship on yeah. the team to, to win. Yeah. So, so you know, You've got to have that on your team. So if you're involved in leadership at your, at your, in your ministry, you know, cultivate relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to be their best friend or that you have to have this deep, you know, close relationship, but there needs to be some. Yeah. I guess the bottom line is you just need to have a healthy team with healthy relationship yeah. and healthy dynamics. I, I think, I think it's really important. And, uh, you know, because there's a chemistry that has to happen. I mean, you know, I've played some sports, you have too, and it's more than just putting together, you know, the Super Bowl is coming here this coming weekend. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of good teams there, but, and they're talented people, but, uh, one of the teams that's really clicking right now, Carolina Panthers, you know, part of what's going on with them too, is they have some real chemistry there you know, among themselves. It's not just talent, although there's lots of talent. There's talent on both sides of the, of the ball. But what's important is, is there's a chemistry, there's a relationship there with a lot of these guys. And I'm not saying they're booze and buzzy, but buddies, but they're, you know, there's something there. They've, they've got that chemistry going. Right. I think that's true in church work and ministry and even in business. Mm -hmm. All right. Number nine on our list. All right. So, uh, you're going, you, you probably are going to fail this year in some endeavor. If you, if you won't have the tough conversations. So, and I see this a lot in church work. <laughs> People don't want to have the tough conversations with somebody who may not be a good fit for the area, the uh -huh. department, good fit for the ministry. You're, you're smiling. Oh, I just, I just, you know, uh, some examples. I, <laughs> I guess the examples popped to mind have to do with worship um, teams and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Got to have some tough conversations. Yeah. That, that mm, maybe this role is not for you. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and again, if there's some, if what we just talked about earlier, if there's some relationship there, that some, can sometimes help. Right. Uh, not always, but it can sometimes help. And so uh, I, I see this in business and I see this in church work. 
there's people in positions that that is just not a good fit. They shouldn't be in that position, or they're in that position and they're just doing it totally wrong. <laughs> and and it's just they're just way off base on and what no they're one's to willing do. to have the tough conversation with them. Nobody is willing to sit down and talk to them about you know how how they could either get better or maybe they need to step away and get into something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's hard, but you know what? If you don't have those tough conversations, uh, you know there's going to be some disappointment in in that area, that ministry, or whatever it might be. And you know, you mentioned music teams. That's always a hot topic. I was a worship leader for a long time, and I had to have some very tough conversations with people on my music team. Uh, not a lot, but I had to have a few. Yeah. And yeah. some people didn't do very well with it, and others did okay. So it just really depends. But uh, uh, so yeah, tough conversations. You have to have them. All right. And number 10 on our list. You're afraid of failure. Well, it's, it's easy to, you know, nobody likes to fail, right? All right. So the, so the deal is if you're too petrified or of failing, it's going to inhibit what actions you take. Yeah. And you'll possibly do the wrong things or do not do enough of the right things. Yeah. It, when fear consumes you, it's number one, it's going to cause you to do some, probably some unhealthy things, some pretty stupid things. Um, and you'll let the ne- neg- negativity get you off track. And and what happens is you embrace the, what's known and you embrace what's comfortable and you want to grow comfortable with mediocrity. And then for mediocrity, uh, you just don't get anywhere. So you've got to be willing to step out and and take some risks in ministry, in business, even in life, you know, to to be able to to get to the next level. But if you're afraid to do that, well, chances are you're going to stay stuck, and uh, the same old things are going to happen, and you're just not going to go forward. Anymore. So I think the deal is, is we even talk about this. It's I don't think this list is just about personal failure. It's, it's about organizational failure, you know, your ministry, your church or whatever it might be, even your business. Uh, uh, you know, this is about business failure as well. You, you, your startup, your, your, your turnaround efforts, all these things. So, and it, it can even apply, as I mentioned earlier, to your marriage, to your relationships, to, you know, uh, whatever it is, uh, these things that we just talked about apply to this. So, uh, you're, you're not going to succeed when you do some of these things, when it's not your passion, when you don't have a plan, when you're waiting for things to be perfect, you know, if you're not willing to put the effort and work hard, if you, if you, you know, if you just let the thing, you don't have other people that come alongside of you and help you. And uh, if you just rest on the past, uh, if you're unwilling to, to stop doing something. If you are unwilling to build a, a team of relationships of friends, you know, if you're unwilling to have the tough conversations and if you're afraid of failure. All right. Great summary. Well, <laughs> I think it's important. And uh, as somebody that's been around for a while, I know, I know success and I also know failure (laughs) and uh, I like success more than I like failure. Although you can learn from failure and a lot of this stuff I've experienced firsthand. So, all right. So you have anything to add to this list? We would love to hear your thoughts on it because we want you to succeed. Uh, That's something that Steve and I really want to see. We want to see churches succeed. We want to help churches use technology, but most of all, we want you to be able to feel fulfilled and be able to, you know, fulfill your purpose and vision. And so if we can help you do that, we would love to. And you can send us an email, support at streamingchurch.tv. It's one of our domains, one of our companies. Um, and you can check this podcast out on other locations. You can, it's Church Solutions Podcast, so you can look for it on your favorite podcast provider. Is that what I should say? Favorite podcast player. Yeah. Player. Okay. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, we're on iTunes and all that. And then, uh, you, you we're even on Facebook, the, the, uh, not face. Well, we're on Facebook, but, uh, just look for streaming TV on Facebook as well as some of the other ones, but we're also on YouTube. You can just look for streaming TV and YouTube. And so the audio version of this is on here. So anyhow, all right. So let me make one more plug about something in case you're interested. We are doing a streaming 101 webinar, and we're doing it uh, this coming Wednesday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested in streaming or maybe you're already doing streaming video, but you want to get some tips on some things, 
Uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one webinar. It's a basic stuff, although we are available to answer some other questions during the live webinar. Yes. They can just go to streamingchurch.tv, look under the resources menu. and It's under the getting started, I think. Is it under getting started? I think it's top right, getting started. And... Are you sure about that? Uh, I I'm think so. I'm going to look it up. But go to Streaming Church TV, and, and uh, maybe it is getting started. And, and you'll see streaming 101 webinar. I can't seem to pull up my browser here. Uh, but yeah, it's under getting started. Free so streaming getting, 101 webinar. Okay, yes. Under the getting starting menu. So if, you, if you're interested in that, it's free. It's about a half hour long. It's live. Uh, we also take questions at the end. And if you want to be, uh, you know, if you want a little more uh, ammunition to equip yourself or your church for streaming video, uh, that's a possibility. So I just wanted to do that shameless plug. All right. Into that. So, all right. Well, he's Steve Lacey. I'm Phil Thompson. We hope that you have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care.